The basic idea with logging is that for every update that we make in a transaction, we will record info to allow redo and undo in a log. We're going to make these log sequential writes on a separate disk device. This disk device hopefully is just writing sequentially to the tail, to the end of this log. All right, so it goes very fast. And we're going to write very minimalist info into that log. So not only is it going to be efficient I.O., but it's not going to be very much I.O. We're going to be able to pack multiple updates into a single log page, even though they represent perhaps updates to lots of database pages. What is the log? Well, in essence, it's an ordered list of log records written to the disk that allow redo and undo. A log record we're going to look at more carefully in a minute, but basically it's going to have a transaction ID and a page ID. So this transaction updated this page and then information about how to redo or undo the update to that page. For example, an offset and length and the old version of that range of bytes and the new version of that range of bytes. That's going to support redo. We could replace the new data or undo. We could replace the old data. The log record will also have additional control information, which we'll see shortly. Right ahead logging is the name of the game in database transactions. And it's a term you should be very familiar with. Uh, it's the sort of way that people talk about logging protocols for databases, right ahead logging. There's two parts to the right ahead logging protocol. People tend to remember the first one and forget the second. Pay attention that there are two. The first one, you must force the log record for an update to the log before the corresponding data page is forced to the database disk. Okay, so we write to the log device before we write to the database device every time. We must guarantee that. Second, and equally importantly, we must force all log records for a transaction before we return a commit to the user. The transaction doesn't even count as committed until all of its log records, including its commit log record, are on the stable log. They're forced to the log device. The first of these properties, with undo information, guarantees atomicity. The second of these properties, with redo information, guarantees durability. And by doing this right ahead logging protocol with both its parts, we can implement a steel no force policy. So now let's look at a high level at the relationship between the log, information in memory, and the database. So the log is going to be an ordered file written on a disk of its own. It's going to have a write buffer, which we'll call the tail, in RAM, okay? So we're gonna do writes into memory because that's the only place we can update things, right? We'll write individual bytes of log records into this buffer tail in RAM, and periodically that tail will be flushed to the end of the log on disk, mostly sequential I.O. then on the log. Every log record that we write has a log sequence number, which is an increasing unique value. They go up by one every time, okay? So in memory, we're going to have this log tail, and on the log device, we'll have these log records that are flushed to disk. In memory, we'll also keep track of what's the largest log sequence number, or LSN, that we've written to the disk so far. We'll call that the flushed LSN. And in memory, we'll just keep track of this. It's handy to know. We can, of course, always find it out by looking at the log device, but it's a nice thing to keep cached in memory, the flushed LSN. And each data page in the database is going to have what's called a page LSN, which is a pointer into the log that points to the LSN of the most recent log record for an update to that page. So if you want to know why the page is the way it is, we've got a pointer to the log that will tell you. In the log, there's a log record that explains the most recent update to that page. So, so far we've seen we have LSNs on log records in the log. We have page LSNs on database pages in the database that point to the log. And we have a flushed LSN in RAM that points to the end of the log on disk and the beginning of the log tail in memory. Now, let's go through the write ahead logging protocol as it's reflected in this state. So the write ahead logging protocol, if we have some page I, it's in uh, the buffer pool, it's this blue page, um, it needs to be flushed to the database. First, we have to ensure that the page LSN of I the pointer to its log record is less than or equal to the flushed LSN. That is to say, the log record for this page has already been flushed to disk. Now in this picture, the blue buffer page is pointing to an LSN that's still in the log tail. It's greater than the flushed LSN. So we can't write this blue page to the disk yet because the write ahead logging property is not satisfied. Page LSN of I is not less than or equal to flushed LSN. It's greater than flushed LSN. But as time goes on, we'll write that log tail to disk. And now you'll see that the page LSN of that page is pointing into an LSN that's in the disk. 
it is now less than or equal to the flushed LSN. And at this point, we can now flush that blue page to the database disk. And everything is safe according to the write ahead logging protocol's first property. Now, notice that if we want to steal that buffer frame, we certainly can do so, okay? Um, now that the page has been logged, it can be written to the disk at any time. But we don't have to steal that buffer page frame if the page is hot. We can leave the page in the buffer pool. Just because we wrote it to the disk doesn't mean we have to flush it. So it can stay there in the buffer pool if it's a hot page. We can always write it back later. So to summarize, the write-ahead logging protocol can be expressed as an inequality between the page LSN of a page and the flushed LSN. All that's saying is that the log update for that page has to be written before the page is flushed to disk. The page LSN tells us what log record is the update to that page, and the flushed LSN tells us whether that uh, update has been written to the log device yet. Okay, exactly how is logging and particularly recovery done? Well, we're going to go into more detail next by looking at the ARIES algorithm, which was invented at IBM.